Hello everyone. Welcome to Basics e-learning. This is the lesson one on network analysis. Previously in our channel, I have explained basics of signals and systems and few lectures on Z-transforms also. I'm leaving a link of which in description box. Please go through. So different universities call the subject name differently like network analysis or network theory or circuit analysis or circuit theory whatever it may be the name the concepts are same so in this lesson one i am going to explain kirchhoff's laws that is both kcl and kvl and how to implement kcl and kvl in the year 1847 a german scientist named kirchhoff formulated two fundamental laws for solving networks so the network may be how big it is. The simplification process starts with these Kirchhoff's laws only. Further, you may be studying mesh analysis, mesh analysis, nodal analysis or law, uh, theorems like Thevenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, superposition, whatever it may be. First, you have to start simplification using these Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law. So these two laws are very important in network theory. Let us move on to KCL here. Kirchhoff's current law. The law statement is like this. The total current flowing towards a junction point is equal to the total current moving away from that junction point. So what is here a junction point? So combination of two or more branches networks right in the network we call it as node or junction point. See here, I am taking, so this also you take two incoming and two outgoing I am taking. So let us call this as I1, I2 and I3, I4. Let us call the junction point B, O, right? So the junction point O has now two branches, I1, one is here the entering current, I1, I2 is also entering current, I3 is one leaving current, I4 is also leaving current right now the algebraic sum of the currents meeting at the junction point is always zero that is the simple statement of your kcl here now see here i1 is entering so i am taking plus i1 right similarly i2 is also entering so take plus i2 i3 is leaving minus i3 i4 is also leaving minus i4 is equal to zero right so always the sign convention is like this. Currents that are flowing towards the junction, you take them as positive. Whereas the currents that are leaving the junction point, always you have to assume them as negative, right? Now, RS, you, according to this statement, you can say the currents flowing towards the junction points are always equal to the currents that are leaving the junction point. So, Entering currents here are, see this is the arrow that is entering, showing entering current, right? So the entering currents are here I1 and I2. So the sum of the entering currents is equal to sum of the leaving currents. So the leaving currents here are I3 and I4, right? So this is all about KCL and the sign convention is very important, right? Here the currents that are flowing towards the junction point are always assumed to be positive. Whereas the currents that are leaving the junction or moving away from the junction point are always assumed to be negative. Now coming to Kirchhoff's voltage law. It is simply called as KVL. It talks about the voltages in a network. So the statement is like this. In any network, algebraic sum of the voltage drops across the circuit elements of any closed path is equal to the algebraic sum of the EMFs in that path. So here the statement itself says the KVL, this law has to be applied only on the closed path. It can be applied only on the closed path. So the closed path is also called as a loop or a mesh. So what does the law says here? The sum of the voltage drops, that means the potential differences plus EMFs has to be equal to zero means the applied voltage and the drops voltage drops in the network should be equal to zero means whatever the applied voltage is there the full voltage is dropped across all the elements 
so there is no remaining voltage or the extra voltage so in any closed path around a closed path sigma v is equal to 0 is the statement simply whereas the kcl is sigma i is equal to 0 means the algebraic sum of the all the branch voltages around any closed path or closed loop is always equal to 0 whatever it may be the voltage whether it may be a source or a drop but the sum of the voltage sources plus sum of the voltage drops has to be equal to 0. Now I will explain how to apply this KVL on any closed path. So first you should keep it in mind that KVL can only be applied on a closed path or loop or mesh. Right? And the second thing here is one important thing is sign convention. So if you are traveling from negative to positive that we consider it as positive voltage right similarly if you are moving from positive to negative terminal then you take it as negative right so these two are very important negative to positive you take it as plus v whereas plus to minus when you are traveling then you take it as negative right so this is voltage rise and this is voltage drop and you have to apply only this on a closed path and the direction you can choose any direction either clockwise or anti-clockwise that is your wish now consider this network so this is one mesh or one loop in a big network okay so how to write down this we will see so i have a closed path here see a b c d a again i have reached the a right so the closed path here we have is a b c d a right so the starting and the ending node has to be a then we can say the same thing right then only you can say it's a closed path right now let us mark here suppose say if you are traveling in this path a b c d a mark the direction first thing right now so let us call the current flowing here is I1. In this you have I2. Suppose say in this branch call it as I3. In the fourth branch you call it as I4 for simple. Okay. So, so that it will be easy as it is the beginning. So you assume like this. Okay. Further I will explain you simple techniques how to solve these networks. Now see here. Always current flows from upper direction to lower direction that we know and uh, higher potential to lower potential that we know and see here resistor is a drop right so whenever the current flowing through the resistor so there will be certain potential drop right so always for drop what i said here positive to negative is drop negative to positive is rise voltage rise right so here you write it as this is plus minus and just observe the sign convention here i have anyhow minus plus it is mentioned so as Resistor means it's a drop. So plus 2 minus. Resistor means it's a drop. Plus 2 minus. Again resistor. Drop. So mark plus 2 minus. So this is minus 2 plus. Now see here. Observe carefully. So wherever the resistor is there you have a drop. Wherever the voltage source is there that's a rise. Right. It's a potential rise. So according to the law we have it is the sum of the potential drops plus EMFs has to be 0. Right. So, what is the potential drop across this R1? Right. You know V is equal to IR. Right. So, that is the potential drop. So, across R1 the drop is I1 R1. Right. Now, what is the sign convention? As you are moving from plus to minus, it has to be minus. Minus I1 R1. Then, you have E1. That is the source. As you are moving from minus to plus, it is positive. So, plus E1. Again, plus 2 minus, minus I2 R2 is the drop across your second branch or the second resistor here. Then, further move. Again, plus 2 minus, it's a drop again. So, what is the current flowing here? I3. So, I3 R3 is the drop. So, write it minus I3 R3. Similarly, in the fourth branch, the current flowing is I4 in the resistor R4. So, plus 2 minus, it's a voltage drop. So, negative sign will come. Minus I4 R4. Then, minus 2 plus, it's a positive. Or, you can say it's a voltage rise. 
So you write it as plus E2 is equal to 0, right? So this is the required KVL equation. Now you can write it otherwise. E1 plus E2 is equal to I1 R1 plus I2 R2 plus I3 R3 plus I4 R4. This is nothing but sum of the sources, voltage sources is equal to sum of the drops of voltages in the path, right? So, when you are applying KVL, the direction in which the loop is your tracing is not important, but following the sign convention is important. Whether you may be choosing ABCDA or ADCBA, right? Whatever it may be the path you are choosing, the direction, the sign convention is important, but not the direction, right? So, so one more important thing that you have to remember here is, suppose say, consider this network. It has a current source and also a voltage source. Then what to do, right? So, KVL can be applied on the closed network. One thing I have explained and also the sign convention I have explained. If the current source exists in the path, then what to do? See here, simply this current source, you cannot take it into KVL loop. So, here the KVL can be applied only here. B, C, D, E, B. Only this loop can be applied, right? So, the loop A, B, C, A, B, E, F, A cannot be taken. Similarly, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, right? That also cannot be taken. So, that means any path that includes current source cannot be taken to apply your KVL, right? So, this is also one important thing that the student must keep in it, keep it in mind before applying your KVL. So, what I said, three important things. It should be a closed path, then the sign convention, right? Where is the voltage drop and where is the voltage rise, right? So, whenever you have a positive rise, it is nothing but must be considered as positive. That is negative to positive. If you are moving, then you have to consider it as positive, right? So, when you are taking from positive to negative, then you have to take it as negative. So, irrespective of the direction of the path, that may be clockwise or anti-clockwise, but your sign convention is important. And the third point is, if the current source is coming in between that path, you cannot take that path to apply your KV. So, this is all about KCL and KVL, the explanation part. So, in the next video, I am going to solve few problems on KCL and KVL. So, by that point of time, you will be very clear with how to apply this KCL and KVL on the big circuits. For more videos, please do like, share, subscribe to our channel. Let us know your suggestions and queries in the comment box. Thank you.